Hello everyone, welcome to Dial the Gate. My name is David Reed. Thank you so much for joining me. With this episode, we have something new that we're gonna start doing. Uh, I've been looking forward to phase two of this show once we started getting into a little bit of the higher territory with uh, 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 subscribers. Now that we've passed 10,000 people, I wanted to start expanding into my personal collection and into the uh, the wider base of content that the fan community is making. Not just the spacecraft that are behind me here that have become just a staple of my set, but uh, broader areas as well. And that includes um, these custom pop figures, which have been designed by Jason Burning over at Big J Customs. So he sent me a set and I haven't seen them yet. I've just seen some pictures that he's uh, had online and I wanted to do the unboxing with you and with my little trusty sidekick camera uh, right here. So let's go ahead and pull out the box and see what we've got in this set that Jason's offering over at his uh, BigJCustomsArt.com website. Where'd it go? Oh, I lost my pops. All right. I need my glasses, I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. I've never done an unboxing video before, so they're kind of all the rage on the internet these days and I can see why, so you're gonna have to forgive me. All right. Okay. Yes, that is the paper I ordered. Yeah. All right. Let's take this thing one step at a time, shall we? Let me put this on the floor over here. Check this thing out. Now I saw these were on his website, but I did not expect to get one. This is a custom designed Stargate and he's got nine chevrons and it looks like the uh, Earth constellations. So good. And we even got a an earth symbol there. That's extremely cool. I feel the weight to that thing. I'm really impressed. I guess uh, that'll probably go up here or over here now. So very nice. And I got a letter. Uh, hello, David and fellow Stargate fans. I would like to present to you these custom SG-1 figures I have made. Each one was custom 3D designed by a fellow artist I work with from the Philippines. Then I 3D printed and hand painted each of them. I also have created custom design boxes unique to each figure, figure that I also printed and assembled. This was a project I wanted to accomplish for a long time. And after a few years of growing my talents in my business, I was lucky enough to be able to do so. And I'm very happy to know that you get to have the first set since I've enjoyed countless hours of your content along the journey and learned more about the show I have loved since I was a child than I could have ever imagined. Thank you all for the great interviews and everything you've done with this amazing Stargate community that I've been lucky enough to be a part of for the majority of my life. Your friend, Jason Big J Burning. If you wanna check out more of my work or support me in any way, facebook.com slash bigjcustoms, instagram.com slash bigj.customs, bigjcustomsart.com, and twitch.tv slash bigj underscore customs. Very nice, man. Well, thank you for, uh, for sending me the trial runs. These are definitely beauties. Let's take a look at the pop figures, see what we've got here. He's got a... A, a uh, oh, what are these called? Is this an enamel pin? It's something very similar. Um, it's got a pin for your convention going outfits. That's, or your backpack, if you will. Very, very cool. All right. So who should we get to first? I guess should we, get, we should get to the, the head of the team first. So this, wow. I'm impressed. This is Colonel Jack O'Neill, vinyl figure. So customs, my understanding is that it's if it's a pop custom, it is not endorsed by the pop um, manufacturers. Oh, who is it? Funko, by Funko. So that's really cool. Look at that. Let me turn off my fan here so as not to drive everyone nuts in the um, uh, who, with the reflection. All right, vinyl figurine. I'll take these guys out in just a minute. And he's got it in a plastic like protective case as well. So let's go ahead and pop this off here and have a look if I can do it without breaking anything. All right, 
Wow, those are nice. I think it's, I think that I think it's meant to stay in the box. So I'm gonna just go ahead and the box is meant to stay in the box. So I'm not I'm not gonna force it. I don't want to lose its it to lose its cohesion. Okay, so Jack O'Neill vinyl figure. And it's in French and uh, Spanish as well. Zero one. Very, very nice. So yeah, you've got, he's got Jack, we're gonna have Sam, Daniel, and then two versions of Teal, SG-1 and Jaffa armor. That's extremely cool. Let's have a look at this guy. I can't, I've only owned like one pop figure, so I'm very unaccustomed to this. So, all right, look at this. Mm. Pop them out of here. Okay, Jack O'Neill. He's got the earth symbol. That's pretty good. It's got a P90, the Air Force Apology patch, as it were, and more or less an SG-1 logo, and a Zap gun! Look at that! That is so cool! His hair is done really good, and the ears too. The whole body, the, the whole sculpting is just perfect. I really, really like how he pulled it off. That's neat. I'm really impressed. Everything's as it should be with him. All right, let's take a look at some of the others. Let's go with Sam next. Samantha Carter. her that is clearly Sam that could not be really anyone else that's great looks like same build as um, uh, Jack O'Neill the under half so it's extremely cool the paint is so well done got a little chips a couple of chips here but no big deal earth symbol again and SG-1 patch great work great sculpting I'm really really impressed and again, I don't have a lot to go after since I really haven't uh, collected a lot of these figures. I've, I've got one and I can't think of, even think of what it is. I think it's like a Game of Thrones one. One of the things that I am noticing is it, it's not a bobble like the others are bobbles. Um, it just goes straight, like the neck plugs straight into the head. It's not, on a, it's not on a spring. So did not expect that. I wonder what the reasoning is behind that. We'll have to ask him in the interview. It's probably just a different kind of style. Or maybe they just don't offer it with the customs at all, so. Really cool. Daniel next. Daniel next. <laughs> Dr. Jackson. I do want to get into the bottom here. Certificate of authenticity. Oh, he's got, oh, I've got number one. I've got the number one set, that's cool. Date that it was completed. Tag me when you share your pop. That's really neat.
Danny boy. Let's have a look at you. Oh, here we are. Well, there they are coming out. Okay, very good. That one came out. Hello. How are we doing? Come on. Very, very cool. I love that he's got, got a pistol. Which way do the bullets go in again? Very nice. The sculpting is just... It's absolutely authentic to everything I've seen in these figures before. That is that is exceptional. I'm really, really impressed with the detailing of like the Zat gun. That's hot. What do they say now? Is it fire? That's fire? That's what the kids say now? Oops. Go back in. Okay. <laughs> I love this out there peeking over. That's so adorable. Wouldn't expect anything less. There we go. And come on, there we go. Got it. Perfect. That's it. I love these cases. They snap right in, you know? They keep them nice and safe. I guess as long as you don't store them in a hot environment, they won't yellow. Just as far as I understand, that's just just what happens. So that's that's really legit. Okay, Danny boy here. All right, let's pull out teal number four. All right. Well, now that, now that I know the case has come out, let's go ahead and pop this one out and have a look at him. There we go. Okay. So we don't have a reflection here. Or less of a reflection. I've seen this this stock wallpaper imagery online somewhere. Kind of all over the place now. It's kind of ubiquitous. Very, very well done. Okay. Let's have a look at Master Tilk. Kree Jaffa. <laughs> All right. There it is. If I can get his feet out. There we go. Wow. I'm really impressed with this construction. And that gold symbol is really well done. Everything, I mean, the pop figures themselves, they're designed to be out of proportion, but everything within that proportion is proportioned correctly. If that makes any sense at all, probably doesn't. Excelente. Last but not least, got to get my OCD handled. There we go. Un, deux, trois, quatre. Teal number two, actually item number five. And look at that. He even has a staff weapon. I was wondering, is he going to do the staff? And if he does the staff, how is he going to do the staff? Because that's no small feat of engineering.
I am a stickler for um, um, spell check <laughs> and grammar. And uh, he's been pretty solid so far. There's something loose in here. Down, down here. Let's see what this is. we got oh no oh no staff broke Grr. ah he's not gonna have any power for his staff weapon the liquid naquid is in here under the purple thingy he has no more purple thingy but wow, look at the craftsmanship of this thing. Holy crap. Look at that. The little boots and everything. This is so well done. I am so... <laughs> he even has his, his, his cape. Thank you. This word has eluded me. Wow. That is so cool. Very, very legit. So yeah, that would be, yeah, like that. So I can pop that back in, just a little super glue and that's perfectly fine. Very, very nice. Look at that. All the design work in this thing. This was the one that I was really looking forward to because I mean, it's just, it's not standard. It's not standard Air Force. It's, it's, it is absolutely unique to the Stargate world and um, I'm just gonna put that right there for the time being. Yeah, he did a great job. I'm thoroughly impressed. Get back in here. Just a notation on on the shipping, just to make sure that that um, part is is secure. Um, when you guys get your own versions of this, check for that. There we go. There we go. And that's them. If I can get this thing shut. And that's them. All right. Um, very cool. I'm really, really happy with uh, the overall quality of these. That's, uh, that's, that's really, really a cool collector's item, all of them. So he's done a great, great job. And I'd love to know how he figured out how to do it. I know nothing about the pop customs. I wasn't even really aware of them until I saw some murmuring about them on the, um, the Stargate Facebook pages. And then I got the email saying, you know, would you, would you like a set for the show? I'm like, would I? Absolutely. So let's, let's talk with Jason and see how he pulled this off. Before we get into the thick of things here, if you like Stargate and want to see more content like this on YouTube, it would mean a great deal if you click the like button. It really makes a difference with YouTube's algorithm and will definitely help the show grow its audience. Please also consider sharing this video with a Stargate friend, and if you want to get notified about future episodes, click the subscribe icon. Giving the bell icon a click will notify you the moment a new, bell, uh, new video drops, and you'll get my notifications of any last minute guest changes. This is key if you plan on watching live, and clips from this live stream will be released over the course of the next several days on the GateWorld.net YouTube channel. I'd like to welcome to the show Jason Burning from BigJCustomsArt.com. He is responsible for these lovely little dudes and dudette that are sitting next to me here. Jason, welcome to Dial the Gate. Hello, thank you. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I am well. Stitches Loft, Ryan Nixon wanted to know, how long have you been a Stargate fan and what attracted you to the series to begin with? Um, I've been a fan my whole life, basically. Um, my dad was a huge sci-fi fan, so we he, I started watching it when it came out back in the 90s, and every Friday I was at his house, so that's just what we watched was Sci-Fi Fridays, and <laughs> which of, just carried on from there. Which of the, uh, of the three shows uh, is your favorite? I mean, I gotta go with SG-1. I mean, it's, it's the, the classic, the original, but it's it's like picking your favorite child 
I mean, I like them all. I wish Universe would have got more time. I, I thought it was going good places. So I hear but that. But yeah, SG1's got to be got to be the, the number one. Is that I? Is it your intent to um, move in? I guess the one of the bigger questions that people are going to have first of all is is it, is it your intent to move into uh, the other shows with these little figures? Yeah, I plan to expand to at least the other core teams to start with, and then maybe more peripheral characters after that. Okay. Okay. There is um, certainly a lot of, uh, of uh, characters that you could explore. I've seen some people have already stated that uh, there, there are some other people out there who have designed like a couple of the villains as well. This is not my world. So I'm kind of like getting my feet wet with this, but apparently, you know, this, this thing is like all the rage. This, this pop community is kind of crazy. Yeah, Funko Pops are, are rather big. Um, some people say they're like the new Beanie Babies, but I like to say they're better because they're going to be around a lot longer. Because what Funko has over the Beanie Baby brand is they've got licensing. Like you can basically find a Funko Pop for everything. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> I mean, yeah. obviously, like, you see, know, Stargate, it's an older show and it's not really airing right now. So Funko doesn't have much of an interest in that because they're, doesn't you know, appear the to fan be. base is kind of limited where you can go to any new tv show movie uh sports all kinds of stuff they've got bands um everything you can think of funko makes pops for and the custom world just goes on from there and it's like it's not like they're a new thing these things have been around for about a decade now i mean i remember seeing them like 2012 2013 if i'm not uh entirely mistaken so i always expected they'd be all the rave for like you know three or four years and they just kept on going and going. I mean, at some point, you know, people will be like, okay, we're done. And like pretty much right. everyone will get off of it. Like, like rock band and guitar hero. They'll be just like, Oh, that's it. You know, but it hasn't happened yet. And it's kind of like, kind of like crazy that they just keep on going. Yeah. What I found with the, doing the customs too, is um, a lot of the people like, I'm sure we'll get into it. When I first started doing the customs, uh, what got me into it was the show The Blacklist. I was a, a big James Spader fan just because of James Spader. I mean, I've, I've liked his whole career, and uh, and I, I wanted a, a Raimi Reddington pop. So I just took one of the Outlander pops that, that was out there from the Outlander TV show and repainted it to a Raymond Reddington. And then somebody was like, I'd like one of those. And <laughs> <laughs> so one thing led to another i made i probably think i made like six from that show like five or six characters from that show and i sold those for a while and it led into doing dragon ball and all kinds of other stuff and that was four or five years ago wow so okay so explain this customs thing so explain how this enters in to these guys so is this something that Funko has, uh, well, obviously they started it, but w what's what's involved in this process, the customs? So there's basically two different ways that I do my customs. The original way was I would take pre-existing Funko Pop parts. Like, for instance, I could take this Dragon Ball Pop and I can, you know, pop the body off. Oops that happened i could pop the body off <laughs> i could take the head off swap it with other dragon ball stuff and essentially turn a uh, go tanks into like a super saiyan 3 gogeta or something like that and that's how i did it originally is i would just take existing pops and swap heads and bodies stuff like that maybe a little sculpting here and there and then um over the years i've kind of wanted to do more elaborate things and um then the 3d printing technology kind of became more readily available and easier to use. So now I've gotten into doing more um, like 3d printed stuff, like, you know, like this kind of stuff. Wow. And that's what the, that's what the, um, the Stargate pops are is they're 3d printed. Like for instance, this is one of the newer Teal's that I'm working on with his talk all... fest. Yep. It's the classic. Uh, that's uh, actually, that's actually worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying. I got lights all over the place. Here, exactly. So. But yeah, they're, um, that's a 3d printed one i basically print the head and the body separate wow and that's that so that's it's still things. vinyl um it's a, a resin it's a resin it's a, it's a uv cured resin is what the 3d printed ones are okay it's a little bit harder a, a more um dense product okay. than the vinyl so are these the vinyls vinyl, here that are next to me or are these resin too those are resin the ones that you have are all 3d printed oh, they're okay. completely 3d printed wow 
and see with the Stargate ones, it was tough to, you know, I've wanted to do these for, for a long time. Cause it's my favorite show of all time. And I, I didn't really have the opportunity cause I mean, getting the right bodies. I mean, they have like call of duty pops that you can kind of source bodies off of that look sort of like the right vests and whatnot, but there's no Funko pops with P nineties. So I was like, no. yeah, yeah, gotta have the P 90. No, I think Westworld, I mean, has P90s. Now, that's the only thing that I can think of that actually has, that's in main circulation that has P90s, although I doubt Westworld is is a Funko Pop yet. So They do have Westworld Funko of Pops. Of course they do. <laughs> but it's mainly the first season, and it was um, it was like Teddy, the Man in Black, Dolores. They did um, so, so no, Old Man uh, Ford, Ford, Ford. with a, with a nope. P90. Okay. Nope. No Hems with the P90s. Most of the, the weapons, I think Funko tries to stay away from weapons and stuff like that mainly because I think only, the only, only weapons you see on their stuff is um, like uh, the Westworld pops. They have like revolvers in their hands and then like a lot of the video game pops will have weapons. Yeah. But well, I've seen like it, swords and things like like the more traditional stuff, yeah, but any like right. threatening like military grade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the- so tell us about this artist that you found in the Philippines. We got to give him a shout out. Yeah, um, it's him. His name's uh, Ralph. I can give you his info when we're done here to, yeah. to share in the video if you'd like. Yeah. Um, basically, you know, I was looking for someone to to do the 3D sculpting for me because it's, it's a little bit above my pay grade. It's not really something that I, I've learned how to do yet, and it's a really complicated process. It's basically like sculpting with clay but on the computer. Yeah. So um, I, I found a couple of Facebook groups for um, 3D design, 3D artists, and just kind of threw out a feeler like, hey, I'm looking for someone to do some Funko Pop renders for me. I've got, you know, this is my budget, you know, I, I'm, this is what I'm trying to do. I, I made like a little detail sheet of, you know, the details of the heads, the bodies, this and that. And I had a few people shoot me PMs and I chatted with some of them and me and Ralph kind of seem to be on the same page and it all worked out wow and and he's done i mean the stargate ones were the first ones he's done for me i've had him do some um power ranger stuff <laughs> the white ranger i had him do oh uh, excellent and i even had him do a, a movie mascot from the kevin smith movies i was gonna say that looks uh i think i sold that at prop works <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, that's that's my um my next thing I'm gonna kind of release publicly after um, probably next month is the the movie pop once I get the box done for that. So, have you gotten licenses for any of these, or are these just exclusively no. fan made? It's all fan made. Okay. I mean, I, I could try and get licenses, but I I mean I have a feeling for one they're just gonna deny it, and for two, it, I'm not really like incorporated. I'm just a guy in his in his office making making stuff. Okay. You know, what I wanted to uh, do for the month of April is to share one uh, with the community. So Jason and I are announcing today that our giveaway for the month of April, uh, if you submit uh, trivia questions to the show through uh, dialthegate.com, is one of his initial Funko Pop series. So... What we're going to do is if you submit questions uh, over to us for the month of April, just like we do every month in a giveaway, uh, I will get him an address and invite the lucky winner to uh, uh, give Jason one of their one of the uh, five uh, figures that we have here. And then he will make that for you and ship that off. So we are partnering with BigJCustomsArt.com for the month of April. So thank you so much for that. No problem. It's going to be extremely cool. So um, I think I have. Uh, so are you shipping overseas? Uh, Jay Lewis wants to know. Uh, I'll ship it to Chulak if you pay the shipping costs. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, anyone, yeah, I don't. I don't mind shipping anywhere. I, I've done the UK. I've done Japan, Australia. I've shipped all over the world. All right, there you go. Samara Waldner, what order do you make them in? Or did you make them in? Which characters uh, did, you, did you approach first and second, et cetera? Uh, the, this set was all kind of done at the same time. I, I came up with the idea, you know, to do SG-1 right off the bat, you know, the, the first core team. And then I wanted to do Teal with the, the Jaffa body just because it's so iconic. 
That's right. And then, That's... um, yeah, I was just saying. Then after that, like I um. Like we talked about earlier, I'm probably going to go into more peripheral characters. I've had a lot of people ask for Jonas. I want to say that's like the most requested one that I've seen people like, where's Jonas? Where's Jonas? I'm like, Jonas isn't coming until like season six. Calm down, people. <laughs> and then you're going to get Ben and Claudia, so. Right, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely get them. Well, the, the, I might, have, might even do some Farscape variants. You never know. I wouldn't. Be, yeah, I absolutely. So, and then the SGA and SGU people, they're going to they're gonna want their pound of flesh, too. So oh, once definitely. the floodgates open on this thing, you know, that's just how it is. Um, how long does it take to design something like this from beginning to end? Can you t- can you kind of take us through the process of one of these? Um, generally, like if um, say you wanted to commission something, I do a lot of like commissions of personalized pops. Like you can um, hit me up and like, hey, I want to pop a myself done. Mm-hmm. And what I would ask is um, you send me a picture of the hairstyle and the outfit you want the pop to resemble. And then if um, it's something simple, I'll basically, I've kind of got almost a photographic memory of every Funko Pop that's out there just because I live in that world. So I, I'll basically find a head and a body that are similar to the hairstyle and the outfit you want and make up a little Photoshop kind of concept of it and send that to you. And um, go over the details, like, you know, what color you want the shirt, the pants, if you want a logo on it, if you want a logo on the hat or something like that. And um, after that, I basically order the parts. And I generally tell people about an 8 to 10 week production time just because of the backlog that I'm working through. I've got stuff all over my desk here, the uh, projects I'm working on. And But then if it's if it's something more complicated, like if you want like a, a – bunny exactly. green ranger or something like that i gotta get that uh, pretty <laughs> sculpted so i'd have to hit up ralph and um basically see you know what it would cost to have him do that i think he bases it on a certain dollar per hour and then how much time he thinks it's going to take him or something like that yeah and then once he gets me the the file i um, printed up my 3d printers i've got three of them sitting right here to my left and um after it's printed it takes me i mean i can realistically if i've got nothing else on my plate that day i can bang out a pop from fresh primer to completed pop in a day but usually if i'm doing like bulk painting like i'm working on eight of these ninja turtle pops right now so it takes time to like you know i gotta paint each one gray then each one green then i gotta do all the little like touch-ups on each little body i mean all the bodies got their different little weapons and all that kind of stuff so leo it does take time that's just crazy. The thing that I've noticed about uh, 3D printing is if it's set on too fast a speed, you know, you get these lines. There are right. no lines in these at all. They are as smooth as can be. Well, there's also two different kinds of 3D printing. You can do the the resin printing, which is which what I mainly do. And there's also on FDM printing is what it's called, where that's the ones where you see more of the layer lines. Okay. Is it? generally what um the resin printing does is they print in like 0.05 millimeter layers and it's like real real thin and then the fdm it'll, it uses like more of a plastic filament to like go layer by layer and those are a lot thicker but there's ways to smooth those out with like other resins and stuff like that like aftermarket stuff and which way is this one fdm all the Stargate Pops are the resin printing. Are the resin printing, okay. Yeah, the resin printing, they come out nice and smooth. Generally, I, I have to sand the back, because when they print, there's supports that like are yes. on the back. So I have to sand that down and, and all that stuff to make it you know perfectly smooth. But the majority of it, the body, you know, anything that supports don't touch, that comes out relatively smooth. You might see like a little bit of layerness, like layer lines in it, but a little 600 grit sandpaper, and it's it's gone. Wow. Yeah, the the production quality of these things is is absolutely spectacular. You guys are to be applauded for sure. Thank you. So, uh, what's what's next for Big J Customs Art? What uh, what do you have in the pipeline besides Stargate? What's going on? Um, right now, I'm working on. Uh, like I, I said, I got a movie pop that I'm working on. It's going to be one of the next ones that I, I release publicly for sale. And um, I, I'm always open for commissions. I um, I recently did a, a Freddie Mercury from the uh, drag <laughs> video. He's got his little <laughs> sweeper and everything. I um, I do all kinds of stuff. One of my regulars, he's um, having Sasha Banks do a signing. So he had me do a custom Sasha Banks Funko Pop, uh, one of her outfits, blue hair and everything. 
basically um anything i mean i've i'm always working i always got stuff going on i do work on other stuff too like just tabletop miniatures like this big dragon guy i'm working on wow i've Holy done God. um other things like this is a an adult grogu from the mandalorian yeah i painted him up it's a, a 3d sculpt from ir ir sculpts on instagram Wow, he, he he 3D sculpted that up and made it available for free for everybody the file, so anyone can go and wow, download that. Wow, that's crazy, man. And I also do um just production printing for other custom makers. I've got a a friend who does custom pet pops. This is one that I didn't make. This is one made by my friend. She makes custom pet Funko pops that are like extremely detailed. All you got to do is send her a couple of pictures of your your pet and is that your pet? You, um, one of my close friends had a, a pet pass away a couple weeks Aww. ago, so I had that made up for him. Oh, how how wonderful! So yeah, yeah I've I've actually had her make um, three of my pets too. I've got um, a boxer currently, and we've had two previous, and she's done one for each one of those, and they're all immaculate. They're amazing. amazing. I do a lot of production printing for her, though. I print her heads and her bodies for that she uses. It's crazy how. Um talented the fan community is and just how willing they are to to help one another out to to uh realize uh each other's artistry you know and that's it's it's just one of those things that just never ceases to blow me away is just how willing people are to um to help each other grow as artists and discover a new facet of themselves creatively so the shows are the starting point but we the community are what keeps it going a decade after it's been off the air Indeed. So, absolutely. And I cannot forget, uh, Heidi says, Big J birthday, <laughs> April the 2nd. Happy birthday from mom. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> That's great. Absolutely. Yep. Yep, my birthday is tomorrow. Very good. Well, it will be, uh, so this is airing on Saturday, so your birthday will have been yesterday. So, happy birthday, man. Um, thank you, thank you. So, uh, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap these up? Um, I do have a discount code for everybody yes. if they want to um use that on my site. Just dial the gate when you check out. All is one word. Dial the gate, and you'll get fifteen percent off anything you order on my site, BigJCustomsArt.com, and that includes all the Stargate pops. And um, I will also be ha um have the two new teal designs up there. As soon as we get done chatting here, I'm gonna post some pictures of these, and get them up on the the site. Okay. That's legit, man. Well, I appreciate that. So, and how long is that code valid? Until the end of the year. Okay. I so, made it valid until December 31st at midnight. So promo code is dial the gate, all one word. All right, Jason, this has been so cool, man. And best of luck to you for this, uh, this project. Your work is stellar and thank you so much, um, for the, the Stargate as well. This is going to be going up about here <laughs> so in the uh in the collection means uh, the world to me that you reached out so i really appreciate your friendship and i appreciate you watching the show yeah i'm a big fan man i've been watching it for since you launched the uh, launched the page basically thank you so much well you know what best of luck to you let's see what happens next all right thanks a lot Good thanks man that was Jason Burning with BigJCustomsArt.com. Thank you so much, uh, Jason, for joining us in this episode. And like he stated on his website for this, uh, for the rest of this year now, we've got a 15% off coupon. You just go to BigJCustomsArt.com, and at checkout, you put in uh, the phrase, Dial the Gate, and uh, it'll get you a discount. So for the month of April, again, he is offering one of these custom figures for a uh, giveaway. All you have to do is go to, with, with a desktop computer, go to dialthegate.com and scroll down to submit trivia questions and fill out at least one trivia question, get it over to me. And for the month of April, that will put you in the, um, in the queue for the possibility of winning one of these guys. If uh, you get selected, then just let us know which one you want and Jason will create it and we'll get it over to you. So that's the plan. Uh, Ralph, his designer uh, from uh, the Philippines, who's, who's, custom uh making the the 3d designs and his other friend who's working on the um the custom pet 
Funko Pop Designs as well. Their information is going to be placed below in the description for this episode. So if you have an idea for them, you can check them out. Big thanks to my moderating team, Summer, Tracy, Keith, Jeremy, Reese, Anthony, and to Linda Gategabber, Fury, and Jennifer Kirby. These people are the ones who make this show truly possible. So thanks to all of you for for, uh, making that happen. And thanks to you, the viewer, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show and hope you learned a little bit more about uh, the uh, Pop Custom uh, series and what the fan community has got going out there. Peter DeLuise is joining us at 12 p.m. Pacific time, so be uh, tuning in for that, followed by Elise Levesque at 2 p.m. Pacific time. My name is David Reed for Dial the Gate. See you on the other side.